All right. Uh, good afternoon, morning, evening, whenever you're watching this. Um, my name is uh, Professor Smith, Mr. Smith, whatever you uh, feel like referring to me as. And I'm the instructor for Physics B2B. And hopefully you will have watched this before you go to class. But if you're watching it after, it's not the end of the world. Um, basically, for these um, screencasts, it's basically a short version of the information and the chapters kind of me talking through it kind of giving you a little bit of guidance because the idea is for you to have gone through the information before you come to class so instead of sitting there passively taking in the information we can actually spend some time working through the problems discussing some of the issues that come up about it instead of me telling you all the information and then by the time we get to actually in any discussion it's time to go um, but that really relies on your participation in this part of it uh, doing this in addition to the homework all right so basically in the next few minutes here I want to talk about what is electric charge and con and what conductors and insulators are okay so electric charge there's always the uh, famous experiment the Benjamin Franklin experiment that showed that um, lightning, instead of being heat coming down from the sky, it did have that effect, was actually uh, the electric fire. So basically, he came up with the idea, and it was published, and then other people performed the experiment, and his son performed the experiment. He didn't actually do it. He was a little bit older at that time, um, but he came up with the idea for it. And he was able to, you know, prove by by looking at how the experiment went that lightning was just electric charge. It was the same thing that happened when you, you know, rubbed your feet on the carpet and zapped your younger sister. It was the exact same stuff. Not that I would ever have done that. Um, as as I say here, there's no lightning strike, contrary to part what everyone believes. Because if it had, he would have been killed as I believe someone in Germany was. Um, and because of Benjamin Franklin, we've given the terms positive and negative to the two types of charges. And it turns out if you go on and take higher level quantum electrodynamics and a uh, few different uh, versions of things, he chose wrong. It should be electrons positive, protons negative, but it doesn't really matter. It just puts a negative into some equations that probably shouldn't have been there. All right, so let's look at what electric charge is real quick. This should be a review. Um, inside the nucleus of the atom, there are the protons and neutrons that bond together and kind of form a, a fairly solid nucleus, not the kind of lumpy nucleus in the drawing below here. And then the electrons, which don't orbit like planets, but it's close enough for our ideals here. Um, the protons are positive, neutrons are neutral, electrons are negative. When we're dealing with charges, it's basically, even if something is positively charged, it's not positively charged because it's gained extra protons. It's positively charged because it's a lost electrons. So there are more po protons still there and less electrons in place. Okay, so if you take a, a piece of rubber a balloon, a, a uh, let's see, any any uh, of that type of insulator, rub it with the uh, fur, hair. You can take the balloon and uh, rub it against your uh, your hair. It'll end up taking electrons away and becoming negatively charged. All right, we'll demonstrate that in class, but it's always transferring charge. It's never making charge out of nothing. The positive charge here is because negative charges went from the fur to the rubber. All right, the two basic rules that determine electric charge is the idea that like charges will repel while opposite charges attract. So two positives will repel, two negatives will repel, but a positive and negative will attract. And then when charge goes from one object to another, object A to object B, the charge gained by object A is equal to the charge lost by object B, and vice versa.
And when we talk about charge, it's sometimes used as, uh, referred to as the quantity of charge. So we use the letter Q, same thing as heat. Um, but Q tells you how much electric charge there is. Occasionally when we're dealing with big charges, we'll use capital Q just to differentiate there. But the SI unit of charge is called the Coulomb. And we'll talk about why it's called the Coulomb in the next video. But one Coulomb is you know, 6.25 times 10 to the 18th protons, or negative 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons. All right, and when we're dealing with conductors and it's, or electric charges, it all depends, how they react depends on the type of material they're in. A uh, conductor, usually we think of uh, a metal as being a conductor, but in a metal, the electrons are essentially free to move around. Um, uh, compared to other things. So it has a high conductance. It's the electrons are are in the valence shell can can jump between one one atom and the other. In an insulator those electrons are kind of held more in place. It takes a lot more energy to make them move. You can turn in most cases an insulator into a conductor just by applying a high enough uh, electric field, a, a force to make the the electric charges move. And then we have semiconductors, which make um, modern life a lot easier because you can have the conductance um, determined by a number of different things, temperature and voltage applied, things like that. All right. So on a conductor, the charges will, the net charge will spread out because the electric charges are free to move around, so they will distribute themselves easily, ev evenly. An insulator, they'll be stuck in place. So you can have a, a high distribution of charge in one area and nothing in the others in an insulator. All right. Charging by conduction is you're actually moving electric charges from one thing to another. There's actually touching and transfer of charge. And then induction is the way that a lot of things get charged. You bring an object nearby and that causes the causes the electric charges inside that material to redistribute. You let extra charges uh, move away, take the connection off, and then you're left with a charged object. All right, so what I'd like you guys to do next is go through the second video, which is the electric force or Coulomb's law.